Hello and welcome back. So in this video, I'm going to share with you how to turn on your robots and connect them to the server files that you created in the last video in order to turn these three Finch robots into remote robots that anyone can program over the internet. So the first step is to turn them all on. Very simple. So hold down the power button. Now you'll notice that my robots have been labeled with A, B, and C, and that is for the benefit of anyone programming them remotely so that they have a nice big label that's easy to read to know, okay, this one's robot A that I'm connected to, this one's robot B, this one's robot C. All right, so once those three are all flashing, they should be flashing with their initials. And so I'm going to go over here and, turn and run the Bluebird connector. So I'm gonna start that up. and it finds all three robots. And so I wanna connect these in order. So if I look at robot A, it is MFT. So it's my Majestic Forest Tuna. So I'm gonna to connect to that one first. And then if I look at robot B, it looks like it's MTU. Yes, my Mary Topaz Unicorn. And then of course the Visionary Amethyst Puppy is last. So now all three robots are connected. Um, and so in order to allow students to program these, I now need to open up those server files that I, that I uh, created in the last video. So I'm gonna go back here and here's robot server file A. Now if I run this, I'll notice that on, um, on this robot, it's now flashing the letter A. That's just further confirmation that this robot is now connectable. So somebody could theoretically connect to this over the internet and it's open because it's flashing A. Um, now there's something interesting about NetsBlocks and something maybe a little bit annoying with these kinds of programs, which is that if you minimize them, they stop running. So if I, if I minimize this, you'll notice that it's no longer flashing A, and that means that no one's gonna be able to connect to it. So I have to do a little dance here to make the server files actually visible if I'm running three robots at once. So what I do is I pull them out into separate windows, and I've noticed that as long as I, I leave at least a sliver of the program visible on my desktop, it'll keep running. Um, so one thing I do is I often like minimize the canvas, make this a little smaller. Then I go over here, multi finch server B, I'm gonna, you know, minimize it and start it and then make it into a small little window. And then I'll do the same thing for multi finch robot C. So I'm gonna run it, minimize it and put it here. And so as long as I've got all three of these, they are fine. And even if I put them like down here, uh, you know, we can still kind of see what's going on in the rest of the desktop. And I can tell that my three server files are running because each one is flashing a letter A, B, or C. So I know that everything is copacetic. All right, so once I have my robots set up and running this way, I now need to provide that link to the remote Finch client file uh, to my students. So if I go to that interface, let's, um, and I can test this ahead of time just by using it myself. So I'm gonna go here and you know, I'm still leaving those multi-finch servers up and running so that they're running. And I'm going to hit the C key or um, press this block in order to connect. And so it's gonna say, trying to connect to finch A, B, or C, whichever one is available. And you'll notice that finch A is now flashing an X. That means that somebody is currently controlling it. Um, the students actually get to see some information about their connection state. So they can see that they are connected. They can see which Finch they're connected to. They can also see these sensors. Now these look a little big because I've zoomed in on the blocks to make it easier. 
um, sorry, over here. I've zoomed in on the blocks to make it easier to see. Um, but they'll be able to use these to kind of monitor the sensor values. Okay, so now if they click on their program or start that program with the green flag, you can see the robot is going and it is going to do a square. If I go into here and start clicking on blocks, uh, they will run in real time. So there's about a one or two second delay uh, between you know, running, running the program at the student end and then seeing the result over video. So pretty fast. It's, it definitely allows for kind of this live coding. All right, so I'm going to stop my program. If the students are kind of done testing their program, they can hit the X key or this set of blocks in order to give somebody else a try. And then you'll see on your end, you'll see the robot change to A again. Uh, so it, it was flashing X to indicate that somebody was connected. Now no one is connected. The students can also select which robot they want to connect to. So instead of, um, instead of selecting any, they could do you know, C. Now they're, if you press that, if C is available, it'll connect to C. And now C is connected. And now C is running because I accidentally clicked the green flag. OK. So I want to show you, um, you know, while C is connected like this, a couple of um, flags that you can look at while a student's connected. So, the, so let me make this bigger again. You can see there's a, an, in the server file, you'll see if somebody's connected because if it says false for available, it means that it's not currently available because someone's connected to it. Uh, you can see the public ID of this project. Uh, you can see which Finch it is. The password is actually the, the public ID or the project ID of the person connecting to you. Um, so if they, have a, if they are working off of a logged in account, you'll actually see their username at, uh, over here. And then this timeout is actually important because the way these projects are set up right now is that if a student does not send a command for 300 seconds, um, the robot will revert to being available. And the reason that I've done that is so that if a student uh, closes their project on their end, X is out of it, um, before they disconnect from the robot, well, you know, if you don't have a timeout, then um, your robot's not going to become available for anybody else. Now, if you want to short circuit that process, you can always hit stop, hit the red stop button here, and then hit the uh, green flag again, and that basically restarts the robot and makes it available again. Um, so yeah, that's, that's essentially it. If you set up your robots this way, you can then send that remote finch link to your students, provide a video conference setup so that they can see the robots, and then they should be able to program them. So in the next video, I'm just going to run through a few more kind of advanced use cases, like if you want to use more than three robots at a time, um, or if you want to uh, kind of dig into the server project and actually edit the code or change the code in, in some ways. There's a few things you can do to like change the timeout, make the robots go faster or slower, um, and just generally edit it. It's very open. Uh, so thanks. Uh, if you want to learn about those advanced techniques, join me in the next video. Otherwise, have fun making your robots remote.